Game four is in the books. And uh, for you Knicks fans, it did not go the way we had hoped it would go, man. 109 to 101, the, the Knicks fall to the heat in game four, a pivotal game in this series. And uh, this was another one where the, the heat just came out and dominated from end to end, wire to wire. You wanted the Knicks to play hard. They did that, but they didn't play smart. You wanted the Knicks to come in with some more offense. They did that, but the Heat's offense was better. And just like that, the Knicks find themselves down 3-1 in this series and uh, have some soul searching to do, man, as they are on the brink of defeat. You know, after the first few losses, yeah, you can argue, okay, we, we didn't do this right. We didn't do that right. But if they're corrected, you come back, you bounce back strong, and you win. But at this stage in the game, down 3-1, it is evident that this New York Knicks team is not the better team in the series. It's the Miami Heat. Uh, this Knicks team is getting outclassed. There are no advantages in which they can seek to yeah. win this series. If you look at it, star power, advantage heat. Coaching, advantage heat. The areas where the Knicks came into this series with advantages have now been evaporated. The bench, Knicks are getting dominated in this series. The hustle stats, dominated. Tonight, they get crushed on the boards by the Miami Heat, an area that the Knicks have killed the league in. And tonight, for the second game in a row, they get outscored on the second chance points, the hustle category, boards, bench, stars, coach. The Heat are the better team, man. The Heat are the better team. And as I said, you want the Knicks to play harder than they did in game three? They did that. They didn't play smart. They come out the game, five boneheaded turnovers, 17 turnovers again overall, leading to 22 Heat points. Taking care of the ball was the Knicks' strength, not in this series. You wanted them to, to, to get more offense? They did that tonight. The Heat's offense was better. Every single Knicks run seemed like it was met by a Miami three or a demoralizing offensive rebound that led to maybe a three-point play for Jimmy or a second-chance opportunity for Bam or a three-pointer by Struess, by, uh, by, by the twin, by Lowry. You know, the, the Heat were just swarming in this game, and the Knicks now find themselves down 3-1, man. Uh, Al, give me, give me your takes on this thing, man. It's, well, it's the same thing I said in game three, CP. The Miami Heat have just been disciplined. You just watch it all across the board. I mean, the Knicks just got frazzled every single time. They The offense was fine tonight. It was on the defensive side of the ball, which, you know, it's whether it's protecting the three, closing out, boxing out to get the rebound, every little area that you need this team to focus in on. If they want to compete with a seasoned Miami Heat team, they couldn't do it, man. And then when they started to get back into offensive rhythm, you'd start to see a, a turnover, right? Or you'd see a turnover, whether it was by Randall and throwing up his arms in the air, RJ getting across half court and then throwing it back for, for Max Struess to go get the ball and just get an easy layup when trying to find Brunson. It's just the inability to stay calm and composed when you're in a tight situation and you just see the youth in the Knicks, the inexperience of being in the second round. And because of that, New York was just not, it, you know, the series not over, but man, being down 3-1, you're, you're, you'd have to hope for a miracle at this point for them to come back because it, it's just been demoralizing, man, just to watch how the Knicks, have, have, how the Miami Heat have been able to execute in all facets of the game. Just been demoralizing. Yeah, this team was not ready to play to defend the Heat tonight, and it was just mind-boggling at the non-stop technical mistakes, falling for every single pump fake, everything at the three-point line. They were falling for every single pump fake, whether it was Max Struess hitting everyone with a pump fake, Kyle Lowry hitting everyone with a pump fake. Duncan Robinson, it was everybody, Kevin Love, every and and the thing is, again, and this is why this team is so well coached. Once the Heat saw that the Knicks fell for it one, a second, a third time, they continued to do the same move. It was just a different player with the basketball. 
it don't tell me that's not Eric Spolstra continuing to attack any leak that he sees on the opponents. And that's how these are the little details that sometimes you look at that roster with no Oladipo, with no Tyler Hero, with Jimmy Butler missing a game, even though they lost, but you still saw how they played missing a game in the series. And you ask yourself, how did this team beat the Bucks a higher seed? How is this team now on the brink of beating the New York Knicks a higher seed? Who knows what they do after? It's because this head coach looks for every little advantage he can get. Every little weakness he sees on your defense from game to game. And every game, it seems to be a different story with how the Miami Heat are beating the New York Knicks. The Knicks tonight get back to basics. They start Quentin Grimes. You start to see a little bit of the spacing early on. And yet they score 30 points in the first quarter and they give up 31. And a lot of disappointing performances for me individually on this team. And now your backs are really against the wall and you have to win one in, in, in New York and see what you can do getting back to Miami. That. R.J. Barrett had that ter terrible turnover off a timeout. He crossed half court. He was uh, double teamed. They trapped him. He turned the ball over. Strews got an easy dunk. What did R.J. do right there? He hustled, got the ball out of bounds, and then he went all the way down court and scored. And I said that right after that. I said, you see that sequence right there in a matter of five seconds? Yes, the turnover by R.J. was frustrating. It was frustrating. But look what he did right after that. He didn't put his head down and gave up. He went right down the court and scored and gave you the effort, gave you the hustle. I can live with people making mistakes when you get that. I cannot live with the effort that I saw from Julius Randle tonight. That's not the effort that, you know, Joel Embiid and Harden and, and Durant and Booker. And before you guys say, well, J.D., those guys are way better than Randle. Yes, in terms of being star level players, but you're not questioning their effort level. Well, listen, man. I, I told y'all years ago, this wasn't a guy to lead this team to the promised land. I told y'all this. But he's the second option, it. CP. And I, I tell y'all this. He's the second option. Oh, yo, now, wait. These people, oh, I hear you 100%, bro. I hear you 100%. But, 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 but when the going, and when things were going great in the regular season, oh, CP, you wanted to trade him. Take, take your words back on Julius Randle. And what I say, wait until money time. It's not a knock on the guy, man. It's not a personal attack. People say, oh, CP, you hate Randall. You hate on him. I don't even know the guy to take it personal. I'm talking about basketball, the business of basketball. He's not the guy, folks. That's it's just it just is what it is. He's not the guy to take us to the promised land. He has talent here and there. He does, his decision making could be here one day, could be in the tank the the next day. Superstars don't don't do that. You see what Jimmy's doing out there on one leg, outsmarting the Knicks, finding his way to points, finding his way to the free throw line. Superstars elevate their game during money time. That was my point. I mean, you could just all it all simplify. It's all simplified in one play. Randall has the turnover, throws his hands up in the air. And you're like, why are you having your hands up in the air and not running back on defense? As JD points out, like, where's the hustle? Where's the effort? Where's staying laser focused in the game? That's what you look. And, you know, Brunson did it. Some of the role players tried to do it, man. I get that it's frustrating, but the guys who are able to take it to that next step to take it past the second round are the guys who are able to stay locked in, as you said, CP. And just and just just take it to another level of just not only the level of play, but you like there was a play that Kyle Lowry did, right? You can see the veteran experience. He caught Hart. He caught Hart's arm underneath his arm to fake the foul, right? And you're like, oh, wait, that's not a foul. But yet that's that savviness. That's that veteran player saying, let me stay focused. I may not get this shot, but I know every trick in the book. It's like what CP3 does. He knows every single trick in the book, man. That's what takes you from a good player. That takes you from all star to great. Yeah. That's why I kept saying, man, it's it's always what I talked about throughout the rest of the season. Like, it's the focus, man. It's the it's the intense. How do you how do you make everyone else better around you? How? That's what makes a great player. Good players, they can go get their own. They can do whatever, man. They can go get. It's fine. The great players, they make everybody else better. 
after game two, I called in and I was like, I don't want to hear any more Julius Randle slander. Like I was riding for him, this, that. And then you come out here, you make me look like a fool, man. Like, bro, what are you doing? Like I even, at this point, I'm like, yo, leave him in Miami. Like make him walk home back to New York. Like you're going to go out there and not even show any kind of heart, no kind of pride. You're supposed to be a leader of this team. Like, I can't take that, man. It's it's like with the way we, I'm, it's almost like I'm not even so upset that we lost. It's just the way that we lost. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like they did, they, I agree. I understand like they had the starters out there like the whole second half. I get that they're tired, but bro, where where is the intensity even from the beginning of the game from Julius Randle? Like he's just so lazy on the closeouts. Seems like he's moping around like, the only bright spot for me in these playoffs or well, no, the, the Cavs series is great, but like, I really am looking at like RJ Barrett and mm-hmm. I kind of, I'm starting to see the embers of something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And maybe I can light a spark and maybe he could be a star for this team. I really, really like what I've seen from him in these playoffs. I thought the deci- I thought his decision makings really improved since like game three of the Cavs series. I really like his shot selection, but man, just the, frustrating way to end well the series not over but uh, they gotta get back i yeah. hope that they at least can win one at the garden you know what i mean like, i'm not trying to watch us go out like that on home court, absolutely that's all i got hang in there man hang in there all right so uh, i'll try to like i know it's hard but i'll try to inject i won't say optimism but i'll mm-hmm. try to inject some perspective here sure. this has like 2012 vibes that that series against the pacers we we're in a similar spot and I remember it vividly because we didn't get into the second round these past couple of decades, except for that series. We were down 3-1. We lost both games in Indiana. And, like, we were kind of dead in the water. But I remember after you won game five at the Garden, the feeling shifted to, like, if we could just get game six, right? Like, I know it's a stretch right now. We're all feeling down. Mm-hmm. But if we win game five, I remember the feeling in that series were like, let's just get game six. If we get that game in Indiana, mm-hmm. then they don't want to see us in the Garden game seven. So mm-hmm. I know the way we lost today, it's hard to see it that way. But what else can you do? You take it one game at a time. If we well, can somehow we can get the victory on Wednesday in MSG, then it's like if we get game six, you never know what can happen. And I'll say this, Miami, they're not overwhelming us, man. Like, this isn't the Trey Young effect. This isn't like where we're watching mm-hmm. a team doing something and we have no answer. They're just playing freely. But freely, and I think that comes from the coach. It seems like Spolcher gives them the green light. He's empowering them. Mm-hmm. Where our players, they're capable, man. They're just hesitating. And I might be overthinking this, but I think that stems from just the culture. Like, there's parts of what Thibodeau does. And Julius is a part of this as well with his body language. But Thibodeau, he established a culture when he first got here, getting everybody on point, everybody's work ethic. But he also brings the bad side where guys are just like hesitant to shoot. They're hesitant to like make a certain move because they feel like as soon as they do it, they're going to get pulled. They're not going to see the floor. I really think it comes from that. You look at guys on Miami, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, who like didn't play at all this year. These guys are just shooting the ball like without without a thought in mind. They miss it. They shoot it again right up the court. But the shots they're taking, they're set shots. They're not hesitating. They're just doing it. Mm-hmm. What New York does, our team, man, is just like everything seems forced. Even if this makes sense, even the easy shots, they're making it harder on themselves. So it's just frustrating, man, because like Miami's not the better team. This isn't like the Hawks series where we're just with this Cinderella story and they just got this player on where, their team. That where we are, no the, where are the Knicks better? We bro? beat ourselves. Where, where are the Knicks better, bro? Then in terms of our depth, if people play to their potential, if the Knicks top to bottom from the, Miami has bro, the best bro, their bench is getting smoked in this series. No, no, no. I know they're getting smoked, but I'm saying potential wise, if they can play to their potential, the way they've been playing all season, the Knicks have the better team. They haven't been playing like the better team. But I think if Grimes plays the way he played in the regular season, if quickly plays the way he played in the regular season, they have it potential wise. They haven't been playing that way. I agree with you 100 percent. But it just seems like everything is hesitant. How many loose balls today did they have? But they just, it, it went out of bounds. They slipped through their hands. Right. Mitchell Robinson, he upset me. They had a chance to cut it to five. And he's talking about a couple of weeks ago, wanting to be more part of the offense. It slipped through his hands. Everything seems so nervous. And yeah, man, we'll see you guys uh, Wednesday, man. Game five. Keep hope alive. Let's go, man. We out of here. Peace.